Let's go to politics now, and don't be fooled by the fact that the House is on recess for the month of August. There is no break from the health care debate. In fact, things are heating up as Congress heads home to tell its constituents why health reform will make their lives better or worse, depending. I'm joined now live from Washington by Democratic Congressman Jerry Connolly of Virginia. He is a member of the House Budget Committee. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning, Al. Uh, okay, this week Roll Call reported that you said Republicans seem to have succeeded in framing the health care debate. Why haven't Democrats been able to distill and fight for their plans in a way that could rally wider support? Well, you know, ours is a more complicated message. We're dealing with, you know, a, a multifaceted part of the American economy that uh, is very complex and huge. Uh, the Republican message machine is pretty simple. Uh, they scare people, uh, they distort what's in the bill, and theirs is an unrelenting negative message. And over time, that's taken a toll. Hmm. I know that your district, sir, has the highest median income in the United States. The Wall Street Journal quotes you as saying that 14% of your constituents earn $200,000 or more a year. So if a health bill ultimately included provisions for taxing the wealthy to help pay for the care, would you still support it? Well, I have, uh, I've said that uh, the surcharge that came out of the House Ways and Means Committee, uh, the thresholds for that surcharge are too low. But more importantly, why are we even talking about revenue enhancement at all before we've rung out every possible cost savings in the system? Simple example, pharmas put $85 billion on the table of savings. Uh, the hospital associations put $130 billion of savings on the table. The insurance industry has put zero dollars on the table. Why aren't we looking first at savings before we talk about any kind of revenue enhancement? Hmm. Let's look at the LA Times article which reports that the health care that you get as a member of Congress uh, is pretty darn good. Here's some of the highlights they listed. You get your choice of 10 national health care plans plus some HMOs from your home state. You get special treatment at federal medical facilities and there's no such thing as a pre-existing condition. Now some are arguing this means that members of Congress don't understand their constituents health care problems. What is your take? Um, I'm not aware of any special member health care uh, program. I, I signed up for Blue Cross Blue Shield like millions of other federal employees. The, uh, as far as I know, the health care benefits available to me are pretty similar to the health care uh, benefits uh, available to anybody who works for the federal government. But I think that's the point. Why can't we make those benefits available to every American? Well, that is a great point. And what do you think is standing in the way of that? I mean, what, what members of Congress and the federal government employees get is great. Why not extrapolate that out for the country? Well, uh, uh, that's what we're trying to do with health care reform, I hope. Uh, we are going to ex uh, eliminate previous existing conditions. We are going to cap uh, the cost so that no family is destroyed by a catastrophic illness. We are going to close the donut hole for seniors. We are going to make sure that insurance policies are portable so if you change jobs or lose your job, you don't automatically lose, lose health care coverage for you and for your family. Those are very important reforms that are the essence of what we're trying to do with health care reform in America. All right. Well, Virginia's Democratic Congressman Jerry Connolly, I know this will be the first of many discussions you have on the topic.